because um, it does mean a lot to me to be in a room full of actors because I do, I do really love this process, but sometimes you um, you feel alone in your process. Mm. And you know, a lot of us sometimes we get to the chance to be together in the process, but often we're alone in our process, and, and we feel a little crazy, and we feel a little <laughs> lonely, <laughs> and and we're we're kind of those those people that that go into those we're really trying to understand those parts of what it is to be human, and what it is to think face death or loss or grief or and um, and so. We are grateful when we get to go there and explore it, um, and then it means so much to us when we can connect. So I, I feel both very grateful for this, and um, and also yes, very exposed. <laughs> yeah. You've been revered in the past, clearly, but what has the reception to this film meant to you um, in terms of? You know, obviously this audience responded so warmly to it. It got a massive standing ovation in Venice. Um, how is it different from past receptions to your work in the past on a personal level? Um, well, part of it is I feel like I'm with Maria. I have this, you know, she's she's one of us. She's she's an artist, and one of the things that happened when I first was researching her is I I read a lot of the the last reviews. And they were so terribly mean. And I, and I thought about and learned about this time in her life where she was mostly alone and finally listening to her music. And, and she had tried to have this come back and she tried to perform again and how much it meant to her to connect to an audience and perform. And, and they really, especially the critics, didn't give her space. And so there's a part of me that felt, okay, we are gonna, <laughs> we're going to have this this last battle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I wanted so much for people to care about her and, and, and give her a little bit more space and, um, and understand her life. So when it's received well, I feel a little bit like, um, like she's understood a little bit more. And so that makes me extremely happy. Um, because I think she deserved it and I think she was, I think she was a, a woman in a lot of pain, mm -hmm. and I think she was a good woman who really cared and really tried to be, uh, really was committed to being an artist. Now, I read that you met Pablo Lorraine, the, the fabulous filmmaker behind this film, uh, Jackie Spencer, um, years before he actually approached you to star in this, is that correct? Was it you, because you were a fan of his work, approaching him, or was it vice versa, or what was that first meeting? That's how I remember it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he remembers it, but I, I had seen Neruda, and I was aware of his work, and, and um, you know, I think he has, there, he has a, a gift for both being, you know, some people, some directors are really great with the visuals and scope and they're just, their films are stunning and cool, but they're not necessarily the ones that are great with actors. And he has this wonderful ability to, to focus equally on both at all times. And, and so I, I recognize that when I saw his work, he really, he's, he's really interested in the map of the human being. Um, and also can make a beautiful frame and a beautiful, and love cinema. Um, so, and I love for him, he grew up, he's not here, but he grew up listening to opera. Um, and his mom, he tells this story that he would go to the opera and then his mom would say to him, that was wonderful, but now I want you to hear Maria Callas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so he was there, this woman and this, and his mother, right, and this music, and, and so, in many ways, if you look closely, this is an opera. This is Pablo's exactly. opera. And mm. that's quite cute. Um, when he first approached you with Stephen Knight's script, what was your gut reaction? Were you humbled, surprised, nervous, excited? Well, there wasn't a script. He approached me before, before. just with the idea that we would, you know, um, and I was terrible. Well, I don't. 
I didn't sing. Mm -hmm. So, but like all actors, <laughs> we say we do. <laughs> we can work cry, we can whatever you want. <laughs> I said I could, but I said I could kind of thinking, well, it's like, it's like movie singing. I can, I'll, I'll learn this. I'll figure this out. Um, and then with the very hard awakening of you can't fake opera. And I had seven months of training and, and, uh, and eventually worked up the nerve to, had to sing like, actually it was closer, but just sing opera out loud alone in front of Pablo before we started shooting so he could, you know, make sure he believed it and he was, it was going to be okay. And we both went home like, <laughs> and he was very good to me. We started, well, one, he, he made sure my classes and my teachers were great. He took me very seriously as a singer and even gave me breaks in between the performances and the pianos everywhere I went. And, um, and then he, um, he, we started smaller. We started with the close-up, um, which was nerve-wracking in its own way. But we started, but there was like 10 people in the room. And I was like making sure my sons worked on the movie and I had them like watch the door. So, <laughs> and then we, we worked up towards La Scala. But that's what scared me. Like the, the other sides of her didn't scare me. I, 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 felt, I felt so deeply moved by her. I wanted to get close to her. And, but the singing terrified me. The film opens with you in close-up singing, which is, yeah, that's amazing. Um, so when you were presented with Stephen's script, because the movie really focuses on such a specific time yeah. in her life, the end of her life, um, what surprised you about, about his approach, um, about where Maria found herself at this stage, and, and, and did, you, did it speak to you on some level, her, her battles, her demons? Sure, probably in more ways than I'll confess. But, um, I, you know, I, it did, and I, I think, um, but, but they also both gave me space to also add a little bit here and there of where I felt that she, um, of who she was. So it was just very collaborative and very, we, we all had the same intention, I think. Um, but I thought he didn't, I mean, I, I think it was, a, it was a brilliant script because it had humor. Because this is so easily could have been uh, just self-pitying and, and kind of, uh, you know, not, not welcoming even. And there's something about opera, publicity, you know, people think of it as this elitist art form, but it was really made originally for the masses. It's supposed to be. And so the idea was, can you make a film about her and opera that says, welcome everybody. And, and like enjoy opera and get close and sometimes it's and so the the personality and the humor and the colors um, were so important and so wonderful and the dogs just the dogs <laughs> so much she has such great zingers I found myself yeah. just wanting to quote them constantly I love the one though you know when she's at the restaurant and she says, uh, I, I, I don't go to restaurants to eat, I go to restaurants to be admired. <laughs> that must have been so much fun to say. <laughs> it, was, you know, it was fun to be like this older, eccentric artist. Yeah. You know, just to be, there was something so wonderful about embracing the, the size of her, the eccentricity of her, the colors of the creative, and not feeling that she, because she never did, really. Uh, you know, she had this private self, but she kind of didn't apologize for things. She had this, so it took me a minute with like the fur and the bolero hat and the dogs walking down the street to feel, I thought it was so crazy. And then I felt like, okay. <laughs> I like that, I like, I, I think it's so important to just original, creative, a lived life that earns all these mm. unusual things about ourselves as we get older, and, and so I, I love that. <coughs> Glasses, 
<laughs> well, you know what was so interesting is I didn't, we took, we had an optometrist look at them because we were seeing whether, you know, what we had to do. And they, they said this woman was basically blind. <laughs> Which, then when you think about it, that means that when she was sent to the conservatory too young, her mother sent her in and lied and said she was older, she was, she was sent there by her mother to basically just succeed. And she wasn't, and you didn't have contacts at the time, so she couldn't say, I can't see, I need contacts. She had to memorize differently, she had to pretend. She was working with that, and there is one interview where she casually says, I couldn't see the conductor. Mm. So, she's kind of amazing. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't need him. Um. <laughs> I think that's sometimes why her colors are a little different, and then they say something like, oh, she was so original, and I think, was she, or was she? <laughs> she couldn't see, and then she, yeah. she turned it into something magical. <laughs> Um, there's this amazing quote that Pablo said about why he um, thought of you for, for the role. I'm sure you've heard it many times. Um, but he said, there was no struggle for Angie to be Maria Callas and carry that weight as she already has it. Did you ever talk to him about, about this? Or what do you make of that quote? And how does it, how does it touch you? Yeah, okay. Well, you know, I don't know, I mean, a lot of thoughts come to mind because you have things that give you that weight in life. And um, I, I feel very fortunate as an artist that I have a place to put some of that weight. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know, I mean, I suppose I, I, I don't know how, it, how, it, how I feel about that, that we, or that I carry that. I, I almost, very personal, but I hope I don't, appear with somebody with that weight or that darkness or that heaviness, but I do feel sometimes that I have it or that I, you know, we, we all, these, these things happen to, and we just carry things over, over a lifetime and sometimes we wear them light, lightly and sometimes we're not very good at hiding that. And you're lucky enough to work in a medium that you can exercise those, okay. so. Yes. Um, so when, um, when the film, sorry, where the film finds her, uh, finds her in a very, very, um, living a very solitary existence. Um, you know, you, you yourself, you're surrounded by friends and family. How did you relate to that, that level of solitary confinement, self-imposed in many ways, or by the public, I guess you could argue? Um, well, I, I actually am <laughs> I don't I don't have a a big family like I, I don't have a family but like a big family um lost my mom when I was young so I don't have like a big circle yeah. um I'm but I have my fam my children um and uh it, it, and I, th and I thought of that often. I thought of how different she might have been if she was able to have that kind of love that you live for someone else and you feel the joy of that kind of warm love, which she didn't get from her mother and she didn't get from um, lovers. So she never had, I don't think she ever had that, but I do think the two people in her life that were close to her were truly close to her and cared about her. And I'm so happy she had them. So, in terms of what you knew about her life before agreeing to play the opera icon, um, what did you know about her and how much research, you said you had seven months to prepare, but in terms of how much you had to read and how much you had to learn about her life and her past, how did that process go? Well, Pablo was very well researched and so he would show me these books or different things to watch and I think I was immediately taken by how much everybody had such an opinion about this woman. <laughs> and I kind of felt like, look at all these biographies telling me who she was. Look at all these experts saying they're absolutely sure of the nature of her character and why she did what she did or what her secrets were, you know? And so I think it was more, it was less that I would read them and think, oh good, that was helpful, and more that I would think, 
what what it must be like to have nine different biographies of people absolutely sure of who you are. <laughs> and, and kind of wanted to give space to like, okay, like Maria, who's Maria? Who's this, who's this little girl who was so disciplined to survive and to work so hard at something that she would feel safe and that she would be like, given some space and and uh, you know who, who was she and I found I really found it a lot in um, and so I loved her robe I oh. loved her robe and I loved her glasses I loved I loved there was something about it that was very very earthy yeah. and I felt in her mind my mom wore a robe a lot I wear a robe a lot like, <laughs> mom, <laughs> robes um, but <laughs> you feel that like there's something just, there was just something very, uh, I felt her smallness. And then I realized what it must have taken for that very wounded, broken, often sick person to become that. And the discipline and the nerve and the, I don't know, so, so to me, I, I fell in love with Maria. And I, you know, I was, um, I was impressed with Callus always, but I, I, I have a big heart for Maria. Sure, everyone here wants to know, did you keep the room? <laughs> he didn't give me the room. Oh. I did. Oh. 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 walking around my house. Like, that'll be me. I'll, that'll be, I'll be a little bit. I'm going to be eccentric older. <laughs> my poodles and my glasses. Also a robe wearer, and I would get it. looks it was very comfortable. Um, <laughs> We only have uh, time for one more question. Um, oh my gosh, one more question. Um, why don't we just talk with uh, another um, emotional one, if you will. Um, yeah, so I, I want to know how this role changed you, how it affected you playing her, the seven months of preparation. You went to the distance for, for this project, for this film. Um, how has it changed your the approach that you're going to take to to your craft and even to your to your filmmaking. Well, I think it reminded me because I never I never played an artist, and I think you know I've said this before, so forgive me if you're hearing it again. But I think we, you know, there's a lot in our business that becomes about the business, and there's a lot that we that we we sometimes forget that we're what it is to really live a life as an artist and. And, and the gift that that is and the challenges, but like what that really, really is. And, um, and so I think because of that other side of this business, that other side of Hollywood or stuff, I'd almost not been proud to say, I'm an actor, I'm an artist. I, I think there was a part of me that was, uh, because of the celebrity aspect of, this, of, of that life, I, I stayed away from it for a very long time. And this film helped me to kind of reconnect to that, what we all do, what it is to like study and feel and think and push ourselves and try for something that scares us and do something that maybe people will like or don't like, but we, you know, just all that stuff that, and it made me kind of want to rejoin the community in a different way and, and it, and help us like and be a part of whatever it is that gets us all past that stuff and just get messy together in that room where we get to just be really human and do all that we're supposed to do as messy, open, emotional artists. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out.